All right, we're back again with another episode of Roofer Reflections. I'm really excited to have Sage on today. Sage, thank you. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Since you come from sort of the banking finance side and coming over, especially like the contrast. So tell me, you know, your, your sort of uh, early background in, in uh, banking and we can go from there. Absolutely. So I graduated from St. John's University. That's out in Queens, New York. And I graduated with a marketing degree, but both my parents were bankers. Um, they were in the finance industry. So for them, they didn't believe marketing was an actual, like anything. They were like, what kind of degree is this? So guess what? You can't get a job in marketing, so you're gonna go into finance. So my dad kind of hooked me up with a recruiter and I ended up working at JP Morgan. It's my first job out of college doing back office operations for the investment bank. Slowly after that, they ended up moving those operations down to Delaware, which I, at that time, they did offer me that position, but it just, I didn't want to move to Delaware at the age of 22. So I was like, absolutely not. So then I ended up at Lehman Brothers for a little bit. I was there for about a year and decided that, you know, that, that really wasn't, investment banking wasn't my thing. And I knew that I still wanted to do marketing and, and somewhere in those, in that world. And because of my banking background, I actually got another position at JP Morgan to do more of the events um, and communications role. And then I got um, recruited to go over to Capital One Bank. And then shortly after that, Rabo Bank. So I spent about a total of 15 years between investment banking and, and events in the banking world. And then, you know, I went through a personal situation, um, went through a divorce and decided that, you know, I had two little kids. At that time, it was just like, this can't, I can't live this lifestyle anymore. Um, it was a lot of traveling, long hours. And I was like, this can't, this can't be it. <laughs> so I decided at that point I was going to, you know, start over and start actually my own company. And so I did actually start my marketing company and Capital Roofing ended up being a client of mine. I was also working at a startup in New York City and helping launch that startup space. So it was all good up until COVID. And so once once COVID hit, I kind of had another decision, major decision to make, either continue trying to push through this or try to start my own thing or go fully into roofing. And it just made sense to come into roofing. I, you know, it was an opportunity there. There was a lot of opportunity within the company for me to kind of make it my own and make my own stamp on it. So the decision was there and it was made. And then we're here <laughs> six years later. <laughs> and you mentioned you started something yourself and then you transitioned to roofing because of the pandemic. Was it mainly just because um, roofing was going to keep going no matter what and what you were doing currently at the time may have not grown or, or, or shrank? Like what was the decision there? I did work at, like I said, I had a couple clients that I was working with and I had the one startup in Manhattan that I was working on. And after being there for about a year, they were in a good place and I kind of set them up to kind of succeed. So I knew that I was like done with my role there. And then while I was working with other clients and things going, when the pandemic happened, it was one of those things that, you know, I could have continued in the events and marketing world. I definitely could have, I could have went virtual. I could have done a lot of different things, but as I was looking and mind you, during that time, my now husband who owns the company <laughs> and I got together. So it, it kind of made sense in terms of everything in life, I guess, for me, it was, you know, where I was in life, where my kids were, you know, having that ability to run a business with my husband or future husband at the time, but like my future husband and being able to like put a stamp on it and creating like a legacy. So to me, that was more important than trying to you know drum up business or work on business if, if there's one thing i've learned about myself i am not a i'm not a ceo i'm a very amazing number two person i don't want to be the number one person it was a learning experience for me but i think because of that i knew that my role would be better suited and my skill set would be better suited if i put all my eggs in one place and i did it all with the roofing industry and also learning that there's so much opportunity in the roofing industry it's it's crazy. Like I've been in now for six years and I've seen tremendous growth from when I first started to now and just seeing all that, it me like, it leaves me excited to see what else is there and what else we could do in this industry. So I think for me, it was just kind of like a no brainer, having that ability to be flexible with my girls, being there for school events, not traveling, which was a big thing. Traveling took away a lot of time for me. Um, and just, you know, being able to grow something with your best friend and husband 
and create a company that, you know, you could be proud of. So for me, it was kind of like, ah, oh, it's a no brainer. I got this. I'm going to do this. But it wasn't easy. I will tell you, it was, it was a huge transition in the beginning for me. I think it was, it was very lonely in the beginning, just because, you know, being a woman in a male dominated industry. So it took a lot of time for me to get comfortable here in this industry. And I will say I, I owe that to the National Women in Roofing organization. So it, it was hard, but you know, now I look back and I'm like, I've grown a lot. I'm now obsessed with this industry. Like I want to make my stamp and I want to make sure I leave something behind when I leave this world. When you talk to people that are considering making the leap from banking or any other industry, um, what would you tell them? Do it. Absolutely. <laughs> just do it. Cause the opportunities are endless here. I mean, you have, like I mentioned, you know, it is a male dominated industry and there's, and because of that, and because of what even the national women in roofing are doing, other big organizations in the roofing industry are doing, they're highlighting their women, they're getting their women in positions and higher positions. And it's, it's showing more and more now. And I think that is just the start. And I think for, I actually had a friend of mine from my banking days that recently switched into roofing her and I connected on LinkedIn and she was like, I can't believe you switched from corporate banking to roofing. And I'm like, she goes, I need to talk to you. And we connected and I told her, I was like, do it. I was like, honestly, what's the worst that can happen? You hate it and you could switch back and do something else, right? No one's making you stay. There's nothing that says you have to. So, and that was how it was for me too. Like when I got into it, like I said, you know, I was a little nervous. I was like lonely. I didn't know what to do, but you come across organizations like National Women in Roofing you find your people, you know? And then when those people, like, for me, it was very different than what it used to be in corporate. Like joining different organizations when I was part of corporate, it wasn't the same feel. It wasn't the same camaraderie. It wasn't, it wasn't any of that, to be honest. And now in this field, in this industry, being a part of that organization, you're like, there's so many badass women here. Like, this is amazing. I want to be a part of it, you know? And I want to be in. I would recommend just do it. Like, again, you're, you won't regret it. This is one thing I really thought I was going to end up back in corporate banking. And after a, after a good solid year of doing this, I was like, there's no way I'm turning back. And I know I, I could easily go back, but there's no way because there's just the amount of opportunity here is endless. And so I think, you know, I would just say do it.